Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. The crypto market's pulling back a bit, and you guys can see that throughout the entirety of the crypto space right now. Bitcoin's trading at about 17.6, Ethereum down to 538, and XRP uh, down just over 53 cents. Uh, a sea of red right now, and uh, that's telling. In the last month or so, we have seen a big crypto rally. People are taking profits. You know, we still have to break that all-time high for Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin on the daily. We can see it is coming back down now. And, uh, you know, again, guys, I keep saying it. I don't want to see it, but it could happen. A 40% retracement could occur, and that is not out of the ordinary. I'll bring up XRP here real quick and show you guys even XRP has come down a little bit in that uh, 53 and a half cent mark. Now, if I put XRP on the hourly, you guys can see that is uh, that is a target, an accumulation target at which I uh, thought XRP would go to. If you did want to accumulate more of it before that next rally, of course, we had a high of uh, 79 cents and a low down here of 45 cents. That 53 and a half cent mark, I mean, I was talking about this when we were still, you know, kind of up here. Uh, and, you know, people were thinking that XRP was going to just continue to rise up. Of course, that wasn't the case. Consolidation has occurred. I did also mention in that video that, uh, you know, maybe if you didn't care if you accumulated more, but, you know, you would if you saw the right opportunity uh, to put a buy order down uh, anywhere between 45 cents and 47 cents down here around the uh, bottom of this zone here. I think 47 in and around there is probably going to be the best price we see for XRP for a while. So uh, if you guys did put your buy orders in at 53 and a half it sounds like you are probably in your position at this moment in time a lot of people interested in xrp at this moment because tomorrow is the snapshot for the spark token giveaway the cryptic poet posted this i received this email claiming that ripple is distributing uh, 5.16 billion xrp to xrp investors uh but guys don't be fooled take a look at the uh email the response email it is no underscore reply at white hat jr.com so of course not um associated with ripple in any way shape or form if you guys are getting these emails or getting texts uh do not click on these links these are scammers they realize that the airdrop is coming up and they are trying to do everything they can to scam you out of your xrp uh, i also saw this guys from aspect here on twitter breaking over 21 billion xrp on exchanges prepare for the spark airdrop in 24 hours and it's now uh, less than 24 hours to go till the spark airdrop i'll link this article in the description don't want to delve into it uh, too deep the flare network is conducting the spark airdrop through a variety of large and small pre-selected exchanges these include binance coinbase bitthumb upbit and many more and here is a tweet from the flare networks uh retweet out Ronald's tweet here with uh, the statistics of the amount of people, the amount of participants that are going to be part of this thing. I think it's probably safe to say that this is uh, likely the biggest cryptocurrency airdrop that we've ever seen ever. Um, we know Ripple obviously is involved in this. XRP is the token of choice. Flare Network's really realizing the value and, uh, you know, they keep hashtagging, unlocking the value. And, uh, you know, they've created something that is really going to turn heads, that is really going to change the world in the coming years. And I know what's on some of your minds. You're getting this free cryptocurrency if you are participating in the airdrop. And do you sell it? Do you wait? Is it going to be worth more? Is it going to go down in value? What's going to happen to the price of Spark? What's going to even happen to the price of XRP? Well, guys, I saw this and uh, thank goodness Michael tweeted this out. This was an article from a while ago, 10 reasons to obtain and maintain Spark tokens. Again, tweeted out from Michael at Val5Links on Twitter. I wanted to read you guys some of this. Uh, it was written by Adrian Sanchez Rodriguez. He is an economist and it was published back in September, uh, but it is 10 reasons. I'm going to go through them because I know this is probably on a lot of your minds as well. So from the moment when the first articles on Flare Networks were published and its white paper appeared, I have been assembling all the information published on the Telegram group videos and blogs and have deemed it interesting to summarize it in the following 10 reasons to obtain and maintain Spark tokens. So you guys uh, can join his Telegram group if you want. It is at, uh, the link is down here at the bottom of this page. So number one, members of Ripple support the utility fork. And I think that's the biggie here. The value variance towards this new network different than a hard fork, as was the case with Bitcoin Cash. The fork, which will be happening after December 12th, will be used to add further value to the XRPL, the XRP network, 
work, not in any way to desert from a decision with which a group of people did not agree. Brad Garling has stated that Flare combines the best of XRP, Ethereum, and Avalanche, which uh, helps expand the utility of XRP, and it helps developers create smart contracts for new functionalities, such as lending and decentralized finance. Of course, we've heard that from Ripple. So Ripple is on board with this fork, whereas in the past we've seen forks occur, and uh, of course we've seen um, mini wars, I suppose, <laughs> battles within the Bitcoin community with regards to uh, the many forks that we've seen there. So they talk about value, they see the Flare networks as uh, adding value to the XRPL and Spark tokens are going to be part of that. Let me go down here to number two, distribution of Spark tokens among a base of clients who have already undergone the KYC filter and can now legally receive the tokens. So aside from managing a decentralization, because one knows approximately who are the main XRP holders, once we have eliminated from the process certain key actors, uh, Ripple and some of its ex-workers, uh, including Jim McCaleb, we can affirm that the XRP network is largely a decentralized one we must add to this the absence of specific efforts to sell the tokens uh the commercial cost will be considerably reduced because we will have a very developed and cultivated community uh as in the case of xrp so that's number two number three here a very trustworthy and predictable governance system is created from the start so he talks a little bit about the failed uh protocols like avalanche uh and instead of that spark tokens will be useful to make decisions for example in the case of some exchange tokens which are used to decide which token should be listed. Tokens are not the ones in charge of guaranteeing the security of a network. It cannot be attacked thanks to taking advance of a strong drop in cost. Uh, it is an important issue, especially when compared to Ethereum 2.0, which is said to have this kind of problem. Number four, bridge between networks. So it will connect the Cosmos and Ethereum among others to develop smart contracts. An example is the possibility to lend and be lent XRP. Smart contracts will be drafted using uh, the FXRP and then obtaining XRP in a one-to-one -one ratio. Of course, that is uh, how we're all understanding how this is going to work, considering the associated costs to be able to use the XRPL. Uh, it is similar to what Celsius does, but through smart contracts with decentralized and the risks it implies, this development and opens the doors to DeFi decentralized finance to XRP users. So, you know, we've heard the term DeFi uh, rolling around in the space and we're really seeing it ramp up. This is the buzzword, I think, in cryptocurrency for the year 2020. DeFi and DeFi projects becoming all the rage. I think we're going to see more DeFi projects uh, enter the traditional financial system and we're already seeing it now. Uh, and XRP is, you know, part of this, they're going to be ready for this because of what the Flare Networks is doing, uh, you know, with their whole ecosystem, including the Spark token. So number five, SDA, Spark dependent apps, using Spark to develop apps like static currencies and non-usable tokens, like a Tesla Model Y holding a register detailed who has a model Tesla Y to be able to demonstrate internationally that such good is in your possession without having to rely on national jurisdiction. As the CEO of Aave said, cars will be able to be tokenized and used as collateral guarantees and loans. A great aspiration in the ecosystem of smart contracts is to develop apps for the assurance market so that the data of a Tesla Model Y will be the ones to mark the delivery of an instant payment to an implied person. One will also be able to carry out uh, an embargo on a quicker, more effective way, even though a smart contract is not yet as smart as having legal validity on itself, even though the validity can be recognized a posteriori. So Spark dependent apps, uh, this is going to be another major part of why uh, this cryptocurrency will eventually be valuable down the road. Of course, we don't know what the price is going to be it could be you know under a penny when we receive the spark token and it might not seem like much but again this is going to be one of those long haul games and uh, if you're getting them for free if there's going to be value down the road how's it hurting you if it's just sitting there in your cryptocurrency wallet you're not out of pocket number six a foundation will be launched whose duties and functions will be clearly established with a company focused on more operative tasks so the flare ceo has assured that people are centering their studies and creating a committee of of experts which will focus on governance and avoid the corruption of the foundational principles. Uh, they have a great deal of experience in governance issues and it is possible that incredibly significant steps forward can be achieved thanks to the possibility of studying how governance has been managed in networks such as Bitcoin or Ethereum. So that's a big one too, right? The research has already been
been done. Uh, you know, the Flare Networks has done their due diligence. They are not going out there willy nilly and just trying to promote a project that uh, where there hasn't been any basis for uh, a use case. For example, like we saw uh, in the ICO craze in 2017, where you know so many of these projects were coming out, ICOs, people were buying up all these uh, SHIT coins, dare I say, and uh, a lot of these projects, you know, whether deliberate or not, went bankrupt, went bust, and uh, a lot of people lost money. This is not the case, of course. Refer to point number one. Ripple is behind this uh, all the way, so that does give me confidence, especially since we are just taking their word for it in a lot of ways. Participants will be able to add data to the network and uh, be granted prizes for that. So these agents will be called FTSO, Flare Time Series Oracles, and will be able to add data from significant sources, thus avoiding an inherent problem to data adding. A good example is CoinMarketCap, which uh, adds data differently than CoinGecko. And if we add the information from both sources, uh, the result is much more trustworthy. We can thus avoid a single information purveyor to be responsible for the quality of the smart contract, which will emerge as a result. The Decentralized oracles are already a key part of the smart contract developing, and the birth of Chainlink as one of the most valuable assets in the crypto market can attest to that. So number eight, guys, the XRP representation over Flare FXRP is trustless because it relies on uh, stock trading carried out by agents and not on the buying and storing of XRP by an authoritative agent as Flare Foundation or Flare Corporation could be. Similar tokens like FBTC or FXLM will be able to be developed in the future. The process will be carried out while using Spark as a collateral asset to the said tokens. Number nine, the Spark tokens will be available for their use as collateral assets in the network for dApp developing. So dApps, as we had mentioned before, are decentralized apps. Like Ethereum is used in the Ethereum ecosystem, we will be able to also pay gas fees in Spark, which adds value to both tokens and network. Furthermore, if an investor considers uh, that Spark's net worth is going to increase, he will be able to invest in the said asset and participate in the decision, making as though he were a shareholder participating in the general shareholder meetings. So so that the participants in the Ethereum ecosystem feel relieved. Uh, the limit to the network cost and the gas price will be voted on. And finally, guys, number 10, existence of incentives to become a transaction validator and an active agent in the network. Uh, the incentives may be commissioned directly from the network if one is an active participant, but commissioning may be entrusted to those in charge of such tasks. A good example of what we just mentioned is Tezos. We must wait to see whether a similar path is followed or there will be any modifications. We already know that Flare will not rely on proof of stake, so there might be uh, slight changes in some subsequent articles, I will be talking about the latest news and the strategic plan, which is being prepared at Flare. This is uh, by uh, the author here, guys. You can watch the video where Hugo Filion is interviewed here, and he links that uh, interview there with the CEO of Flare Networks. Meanwhile, I encourage you to carry on your own investigation and join our Telegram group, uh, which is also uh, linked in this article. I am the admin, and he is also Spanish speaking. So for those of you guys uh, looking to get more information about the Flare Networks, you can join Adrian's Telegram group. And so I hope that clears up a few reasons why we could see Spark tokens really take off in the future. Right now, we're just kind of twiddling our thumbs, waiting for that snapshot to take place. Let's not forget, we aren't going to get all our Spark tokens all at once. I did a video describing how we're actually going to be getting our Spark tokens. I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner for those of you guys who haven't seen it yet. And over 21 billion XRP are now on exchanges that are going to support the Spark token airdrop, guys. That is about 21% of the total supply of XRP. And if you guys have a Ledger Nano and are keeping your XRP on that, I also did a video on how to claim. If you guys still haven't seen that, you got one day left. I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner. So what do you guys think? Are you going to keep your Spark tokens? Are you going to sell them? Are you in it for the long haul or for the short turnaround? Tell me what you guys think down in the comments. I love hearing what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.